order in the court. It's time for Understanding the Law Radio. Well, hi, and thanks for joining us for another episode of Understanding the Law Radio. I'm your host, Peter Lamont, co-host Brendan here today. That's right. And today we have a very interesting show. We're going to be talking about vlogging. Yes, that's right. The Understanding the Law tour around the world vlog is just begin. right? <laughs> yeah, that's Is that what we're talking about? Where that's we, exactly no, not what we're talking about. We're not starting a vlog? We are not starting a ah, vlog. Darn. So, but I want to talk about this because this is really interesting. Uh, I am sure mm-hmm. that you yes. and a lot of our listeners um, will watch vloggers on YouTube. Sure. I do. Yeah. I admit it. Uh, and in particular, my favorite is the theme park vloggers. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and I think that um, you know, we're, we're, we're both of us are fans of the Disney parks. Yeah. And there are people that make a living off of going to the parks, going on theme park rides, eating food there, enjoying themselves, but also having a camera filming the whole thing. Yeah. So we're going to talk about that today because there's a recent development coming out of Tokyo Disney mm-hmm. that has effectively banned vlogging and live streaming from the park. And I want to talk about that rule. I want to talk about vlogging in general and the idea of making a living off of somebody else's invention and what the, the you know possible consequences are um, from a liability standpoint. And mm-hmm. then you and me are going to Nostradamus oh boy. whether or not we think that this ban on vlogging is going to come here to the U.S. and whether or not it's enforceable and what they can do about it. We're going to get well, to all Well, ban on that. vlogging. You've piqued my interest. Ban on vlogging in theme parks. We're going this to talk about like it. This is like 1984. Yeah. Vlogging's being banned. We're going to talk about it. So get ready. All right. So this is going to be an Rise exciting Rise up against show. the man. Okay. All right. So, all right. Let's get back to the idea of, of vlogging, right? All right. Do you know what vlog? Yes, it is a video blog. I didn't even have to ask you. Yeah, you know See, we were talking Nostradamus. about it before. We were talking about it before, and you asked me, "Do you do you know what vlogging means?" And I was like, "Yes." And he was like, "I'm surprised." He didn't think I'd know, or or any of you would know that vlogging means video blogger, or or at the very least, dude, we, everybody knows what's a blogger. A blogger. Those are the websites. The what, little, what do you have a definition of blogging? A blog is a stupid website. That's there not, you go. It's not the that, that's my definition. It's someone who says, I think people would like to read about my thoughts. And so they put them on a website. Uh, I, don't, I don't agree with that. No? I have a blog. Then what would you consider a blog? Oh, I love blogs. I lied. <laughs> All right. So vlogging, right, has mm-hmm. become really, really popular over the last, I don't know, decade, really. Yes. But, but it's really. And, and before we move on, just to clarify, I don't actually think blogs are stupid. Especially not mine. Especially not yours. Yeah, okay. Um. Vlogging is really popular. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, like I said, people make a living off of it. Right, and the idea of vlogging is that you carry your camera around with you and you film yourself doing daily things. Mm-hmm. Some people have theme park vlogs. Some people have work vlogs. Some people have, um, I, I don't even know, you know, uh, what? I've seen a lot of truck drivers that have vlogs that are super interesting because they take you through their day. I mean, they're... Mm-hmm. they're Vlogging in and what's of what's itself. his name? There was there was that one guy Casey Neistat. Have you heard of him? Yeah, everybody he, has. He is incredibly rich and incredibly popular because of vlogging. Like some people just seem to have that natural ability to be charismatic, to do things that people would consider interesting, and to edit it all together quite nicely. And you know, people like him. You know, like okay, if in your life, if you do enough interesting things daily, just start recording yourself. You could make money off of it. Yeah, well, it's true. I mean, I think that you've got to be the right personality because people have to like you. But there's somebody for everybody out there. So, right. yeah, I mean, I think that that vlogging is an interesting profession because that's what it's become in certain circles, and in particular, I think there are Disney and theme park vloggers who have now become full-time vloggers and they make a lot of money way more much or way much more money than than what you would even think um, mm-hmm. based on projections. However, let's get to the new rule yes, that the meat Tokyo potatoes. Disney enacted and let's talk about that for a minute and then we're going to talk about vlogging. So what's the, the, the new law 
from Disney. And this isn't a, a, a governmental law. Right. This, this is a from Disney Tokyo policy. Tokyo Disney. Tokyo Disney has two parks, Tokyo Disneyland and Tokyo Disney Sea. And in both parks, this rule has just been uh, initiated. And this policy states that it bans vlogging and live streaming at the Tokyo Disney theme parks. It specifically bans commercial filming, auxiliary equipment, and public transmission or recording of any kind that may inconvenience other guests. All right, so public transmission, and live also, streaming. Yes, and also no filming on rides. All right. So this is this is a whole. There's just so much interesting things here. Mm-hmm. Um, let's break it down. So so give me the first part of the policy again. So it bans commercial filming. All right, stop. So commercial filming in the context of a YouTube vlogger right. means that they get paid for their videos. Right. And every vlogger, for the most part, that's what they're doing this for because they're monetizing their videos. Okay. And, and they're monetizing it with ads. Okay. Others are doing sponsored promotions and things like that. Um, so that's commercial use. So if you get paid for your video, whether it's through a sponsorship or through Google um, monetization, it's, it's commercial. All right, All right. So what's the next part? Uh, auxiliary equipment. All right. So. What does auxiliary equipment mean? Obviously, it's vague enough, but you know, does it mean a gimbal? Does it mean um, you know additional audio equipment? Now, I've seen, I've been to the parks, both in Universal and Disney, and I see it more in Disney than I do in Universal, and I have a theory on why. Um, but I have seen people carry around a full audio recording backpack or front pack, kind of like what you do in the field. Like if you ever watch the NFL and you see the guys on the sidelines and they've got these packs in front of them with all the audio equipment. Mm -hmm. I have seen people there with ridiculous rigs. Yeah. Cameras, audio equipment. They're, They're live streaming. They've got headsets on. So I don't know what Disney, Tokyo Disney is going to define auxiliary equipment as because theoretically right if you really wanted to stretch that you could argue that a boom microphone on top of a video camera right is auxiliary equipment Mm. because the camera is the equipment right anything you add to that would be auxiliary that that's the an argument that makes sense yeah i mean i i get why yeah so that's that's crazy though i mean you know there's so much benefit that i i personally think the disney parks have from vlogging well, we can talk about that in a minute but let's just stick with the rule for a second so now we've got commercial use we've got auxiliary equipment goes what's, further what's it the next goes part? further the next thing was um live streaming well all forms of live streaming how do they they what do they say specifically well they say commercial filming auxiliary equipment and public transmission or recording of any kind that may inconvenience other guests. All right, so this is interesting because it's it's more than live streaming. But I, I just to add live streaming was added to that list like in like a like a discussion about it. So. Okay. But that policy says uh broadcasting yes. and recording. Yes. So theoretically you could be live streaming mm-hmm. and have no viewers yeah. And record that and put that up, and that would still trigger a violation of that Disney policy. Right. So now that's pretty pretty broad and, and, and very, um, I, I think, uh, it's not repressive. Mm-hmm. We're going to get into the discussion of whether or not we think this is right in a second, but it is, is certainly a big policy change because up to this point, and this rule or this policy was just put in place, what, September 9th or 10th? Yeah, I believe so. All right, so we're talking about something that just just happened. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Disney for years has had vloggers, and a lot of these vloggers they actually partner with. Yeah. Right? So They, this have, is, they have media nights where they allow, you know, the vloggers to come in before events start to yeah. have an exclusive first look. Like at the uh, Epcot Food and Wine Festival, right? Or horror horror, horror nights. Horror at, uh, nights. Uh, they have the the not so scary Mickey Halloween. Yeah. Rip off. So I mean, the theme parks have have partnered in a sense with a lot of these people, and we'll get to that in a second. <clears throat> but this is a major shift in 
Tokyo Disney. Yeah. And it stems from people complaining about a lot of things. Yeah. I mean, I saw, you know, I saw there are comments. All right. There are comments that I found very interesting relating well, to this. Let's, well, I want to hear some of these comments in a second, but I yes. think that the, the reasoning yeah. behind this is you've got a lot of people there on family vacations. Yes. And nobody wants to see themselves in somebody else's vlog as, you know, they're stuffing their face with, a, yeah. you know, a funnel cake mm -hmm. or, or anything. As a matter of fact, I myself was on somebody's live stream. Really? I was, this was a few years ago. I was down in Disney for the food and wine festival and I was coming out of the food and wine pavilion mm -hmm. and I believe it was resort TV one who was doing a live broadcast. And as they were going into the pavilion, I was coming out and there I was. Now, fortunately, you weren't stuffing your face with funnel cake. I wasn't stuffing my face with funnel cake. <laughs> I, I, I didn't look like, you know, a horrendous monster, right? I had, had maybe, you know, groomed myself, so it wasn't such an embarrassment, right? Yeah. But I've seen tons, tons of people who get caught on live streams or videos, and, you know, they're in unflattering let's call it sure. positions. Yeah. So people are, are tired of having to be on a ride and have somebody talking to their camera the whole time. You yeah, know? and not only that, but like this is where the comments come in. I saw people saying, you know, I sat on Frozen and the family in front of me were all on their iPads filming. And I sat on, you know, the ride and the dark part of the people mover was lit up by people's bright camera lights, and it's annoying. Yeah, for sure. And, and just even walking through the park, I mean, do you want to be there just letting your hair down? I don't have any, but if I did, I'd let it down. <laughs> but letting your hair down and just having fun with your family or yourself right. in yeah, a yeah, theme yeah. park, and then you've got somebody sticking a camera at you, and now you're worried, where is this going to go? Right. So that's what, what sparked this change. Disney must have received enough complaints for them to start wondering if this is right. Now, you have some of these comments that you want to read? Yes, and this is, this is where this plays in because I was, before I get to that even, there were people saying in these comments, you know, I don't care who they are. I don't think filming should be allowed at all because, you know, people, it's distracting that f that comment I read about Frozen was specifically relating to a family who just decided to film it. And so people are not happy that they'll go to the parks and they'll be pushed out of the way and cut in line and, and filmed and, you know, people will be filming the whole experience. It takes away from stuff. And I agree. Here are some of the comments. The top comment on this post is ban TikTokers too. The next comment... Well, wait a minute. The TikToker. Did you see the woman who jumped off of the yes. queue yep. for Space Mountain... Now, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. that upsets me so much. Right, so, so Space Mountain used to have this no, moving still, platform. It still does, but it's not moving. So at the end of Space Mountain, yeah. you've seen Space Mountain. It's the big white dome. It's a roller coaster ride in the dark. At the end of Space Mountain, they have this awesome segment where there's a walkway out the door. And as you go through this walkway, you see all these really cool scenes like, you know, futuristic scenes, a robot cooking dinner and Mars. And there's a little robot dog there. It's awesome. They're very clearly not meant to be interacted with. Like, you don't need to look at you. You know these are not meant to be interacted with. But there's a TikTok or a YouTube short or an Instagram reel or whatever which one it was of a woman climbing out of line, like hoisting herself up on this platform where it's, it's elevated above the ground even and walking around this scene and sitting in the seats with the robot. And it's so upsetting because it, it, it doesn't, like, it's clear you're not supposed to do that. But for internet clout, as I'll call it, uh, she did this, and this plays into something I want to say in a minute, something very important that I think nobody really realizes. But before I get there, let me finish reading some of these comments. Good, there's just too many people filming choreographed stuff there. Filming your trip to Disneyland for the memories is fine, but not when you are doing take after take of your dance routine. Then there's someone who says, uh, yes, get out of my way. Then there's someone that says, I think that's a shame. I follow a guy who helps people plan their trips to Japanese theme parks and on the side runs a YouTube where he goes over the new things in the park. I've not been to Tokyo Disneyland, but he doesn't seem that disruptive. Someone else said, he is a serious minority. Most people bother others. 
Then someone asked, how would this work? How do you differentiate someone recording a memorable experience and a YouTuber walking around filming for an audience? Then there's someone, and this is the, you know, epitome of why this stuff is being done. Last time I went there, the front area of the main castle was filled with teen TikTokers, all dressed and doing the same dances and laughing like idiots. When park goers happen to walk in the middle of their stupid dances. So this news makes me happy. And so people clearly do not like these YouTubers and TikTokers who are taking over the park and doing their stupid dances. And I understand why. And I think that it's a good thing to happen. After, after really thinking about it, here's the thing. There is a definite benefit to Disney having these vloggers walking around. There's, you know, that guy, the Tim Tracker. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Well, I, I want to just add something you're, here. You're, you're making a very bold statement that there's a definite benefit. I, I No, no, no. Before I'm not saying it's right. a good thing or a bad thing. I just want to say one specific aspect. Say it. There, speaking of that woman who jumped onto the Space Mountain queue, there's another video recently of a woman who jumped off of Living with the Land, a ride based around growing vegetables and keeping the, you know, this this healthy, inspired... You Hydroponic know, growing. Yes, exactly. And she gets up and she takes a vegetable off the stalk, so clearly not meant to be done. And she got in trouble for it. And and, and then this is where it stems. There's, there's this big one. There is a YouTube channel. That's only purpose is to live stream them at Disneyland. But there's a catch. They go in just as the park closes and see how long they can last before someone throws them out. And here's where all this plays in. When there's enough people doing Disney vlogs, some people are going to try and push the envelope. How can they make it more? How can they make it different? And a lot of times it's incredibly disruptive. Staying after the park closes to talk to cast members acting like you know them personally Getting on the rides because you know there's enough leeway in the rules so that they'll let you on. Making them stay even later. And they're like, in the video, they were all groaning and upset about it. And they're like, oh, thanks, Mark. We love you, Mark. And it's like, that's where the problems come in because people are going to try and push further and further until... Uh, you know, it's 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 something's got to be done about it. So you're saying that they've abused this ability to yes. go into the park. There are too many people who do the same thing and make the money to the point where it's very hard for someone to just start being a Disney vlogger. So they say, hey, I'll do something new and different and also super disruptive and upsetting, like stealing vegetables or getting yeah. on ride parts I'm not supposed to or. You know, I saw someone with a flashlight on the Haunted Mansion. Hey, I'm lighting up the Haunted Mansion so you can see what's there. Or I'm going to stay in the park as long as I can until I get thrown out. Right. It's these stunts. These stunts. And yes. So there are a lot of very popular vloggers. And you started to mention the Tim Tracker. Yeah. So there's the Tim Tracker. There's um, Best Life and Beyond, who I think is the ones you're referring to who mm-hmm. go in at the last minute. Um, there is... Uh, paging Mr. Morrow and Super Enthused Adam and the Adam the Woo, right? And so there's a, a tremendous amount. Now, people like Tim Tracker, um, who has had his own share of controversy because he became very, very popular to the point where Disney was including him on the media list. Yes. And um, then old videos of him and his wife, Jen, had surfaced where he was saying things that were considered racist and uh, homophobic. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of these uh, parks dropped them from the media list. Right Now, I've heard a lot of conflicting reports lately as to whether or not any of these theme parks have reinstated his credentials. But something we talked about a little while ago when you were talking about the benefit, and I called you out for saying clearly there's a benefit. Well, I I didn't mean that is a good thing. That's not what I was saying. Because, like you mentioned, people like paging Mr. Morrow and, you know, super enthused. I watch those people regularly. I think they're fantastic. And they make a living off of doing this. And they're clearly so genuinely enjoy doing it, you know. Well, some of them. Some yes. like the people I mean, that you've mentioned. But, yes. but like this thing with um, the Tim Tracker. So, for example, mm-hmm. right, in the past, I think that Universal in particular really started to embrace them as – media and 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 saw some benefit to them so for example halloween horror nights is an event where you are not allowed to film in the haunted houses yes right right however they do allow people on the media list one night of access where they can film it so that they can post it on youtube right and uh, over the years they've included tim tracker and his wife 
on floats. They've included him as part of the scare actors. They've dressed them up in makeup and costume. They've put them in houses. They've put them on, you know, they, they've really gone all out. Now, my understanding, and I heard this from another um, um, podcast, is that this year they were not put on the media list for Universal Studios. Yeah. And there I was the controversy same. over the fact that they posted a video about Halloween Horror Nights using other vloggers video footage mm -hmm. from within the um, haunted houses because they didn't have their own access yeah. and that's a whole other issue and we could talk about that in another episode but point being that there is i think a very very heavy hand close eye from these theme parks as to whether or not there actually is a benefit to having vloggers now yeah. clearly with this rule in tokyo disney they must believe that the risks outweigh the benefits and the benefits being what it would be free publicity essentially mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. because when they partner with some of these vloggers they traditionally give them hotel stays or cruises or access media access that sort of thing it's not like they're giving them cash Right. They're not paying these people. Right. These vloggers are getting paid from the sponsorships and from the monetization of their video, but they're getting all these perks. So clearly, Tokyo Disney must have said to themselves, we're getting so many complaints and we're seeing potential risk of liability. And that risk outweighs whatever free advertising we get. Right. Now, that has not happened yet in the United States. And now here, here is um, something to add, something that I think is important. Tokyo Disneyland is not owned by Disney in the same way that the other parks are. They're owned by a different company, and uh, I can't put my finger on what the name was. Uh, I think it's... Um, it's a different management company, Yeah, completely right? different management company. But it's still owned by Disney. It, it, it's through a that... licensing agreement with okay. Disney. That's how it is. Oh, yeah, okay. It's owned and operated by the Oriental Land Company through a special licensing partnership with the Walt Disney Company. Uh, and due to that, I don't think it's going to be carried over to the other parks. Personally, I do not predict that it will be... Existing in any of the other parts. Well, you're jumping ahead of the predictions, man. You didn't even get me to get the setup for Nostradamus. But all right, that's your prediction. But I want to talk about something. Nostradamus but... waits for no man. All right. <laughs> I thought that was the KGB. The uh, KGB no, waits I, for no I, one. I'm pretty sure it's Nostradamus. Well, Dwight Schrute told me. Did it was you the hear? KGB. Did you hear off topic completely? But people are saying Nostradamus predicted Queen Elizabeth's death because in the book, well, she was going to die at some well, point. No, he says in 2022. Queen Elizabeth II will die. In one of his quatrains? In, in, his, in his book of some sort, or in his, the interpretation of his book. Well, you know, I, I don't know. I, you can interpret Nostradamus in many ways. So wh right. I, whether well, or not Nostradamus was a uh, predictor of the future, I don't know. It is fascinating. I just don't know. I don't uh, know how I feel about it. But... I want to talk first before we continue and then get to my prediction, which All I right. patiently have waited for. Oh, well. Is this idea of, of what could be the risk? What is, what is something that Disney would think about with respect to taking this policy and bringing it over here to the United States? I'll tell you what I think the risks are. of Like the risks of these vloggers or the risks of bringing the law well, over? Well, let's talk first about the risk to the vloggers. Okay. And then we'll talk about Disney's risk Got and it. then whether or not they're going to bring this over. Okay. So the risk to the vloggers, first of all, I mentioned earlier that I don't see as many vloggers in Universal as I do in Disney. Do you yeah, agree with that? I agree with that. Do you want to know what my, my suspicion is? What? What do they play throughout the Universal Parks? Licensed music. Licensed music. Very smart. And I think it makes it more difficult for vloggers to to film within the streets of Universal Studios because the licensed music would create a copyright strike for them. So that makes it difficult. They'd either have to film with no audio, but then it's not a vlog, or they'd have to do voiceovers later, which aren't as appealing. And so I think that you see less 
vloggers coming out of Universal. Mm -hmm. Now, what are the risks? A, copyright infringement. Okay, you you if if you are using licensed or or protected content, obviously there's copyright infringement. But there's something else, and I think something that's more, um, almost more important to public policy arguments. So there's a tort or a legal wrong, if you will, that I think impacts these vloggers and that is false light invasion of privacy okay okay so here's what false light invasion of privacy says it's a cause of action for portraying an individual in an unflattering manner in words or pictures that someone is not so in other words right you could take a video of me eating funnel cake all right and i got powdered sugar all (laughs) over my face and it's like who is this slob right and that could be all over the internet and somebody else could take that video snippet and make a meme of it right so in theory i might have a claim against that vlogger for posting that unflattering video of me now there are a lot of factors that go into play because obviously the legalities of this are you are in even though disney is a privately owned company you're in a public place so the courts look at your expectation of privacy do you have an expectation of privacy when you bring yourself to disney and the answer is no if you're filming your home video and you're taking my picture inadvertently or i'm in the background that's fine there's nothing wrong about that with with that Mm -hmm. but if you're taking my picture and you know sometimes i've seen vloggers pick up on somebody that's having an issue whether they've tripped or dropped food on themselves and they'll zoom in and that might put me in a position where i deem it to be unflattering yeah now i think that every picture of me is unflattering but that's a different story (laughs) so that you might have a potential claim for false light invasion of privacy. So I think that, that, you know, as a vlogger, you do have some concerns. And interestingly enough, and I, I do think this is an interesting issue, and I wonder how many vloggers are even aware of this, there are insurance companies out there that offer blogger and vlogger liability coverage. And they offer this coverage for people that are taking pictures of celebrities or posting pictures and images of things like theme parks or products. So it's really, really, I think, a a developing insurance field to Mm -hmm. insure vloggers and bloggers. And I wonder how many people out there that do vlogging for a living have looked at this closely enough realize that there's a risk of liability and obtain coverage, some kind of of insurance coverage for this. So if there's insurance policies being written and coverage provided to vloggers, these insurance companies must see the, the, the potential risk as well. Right. So there is risk. Now, what's the risk of Disney bringing this Tokyo policy here? They'll lose... Um a lot of free publicity they could you know lose the favor of all of these vloggers who have previously you know been huge disney fans something i'd like to point out not you know the biggest point to discuss but there's a new theme park opening in universal studios and with all of the others oh, there's been a, a bit of a downswing in terms of how people view uh, disney specifically walt disney world so if they bring this part this this rule over there's a chance that a lot of these vloggers could defect almost to universal and the new park. And but could, then that brings the question up of what I had. With, I've seen a lot of videos in universal that makes me think like, maybe it's fine. Like I've seen videos, you know, they could always just do editing tricks to make it sure it's too in the background, you know, but potentially, um, I think that there's, you know, um, 
so so yeah, I think that they could they could lose the favor of all these vloggers. They could, you know, bad publicity. They could lose because because one thing I heard is that Disney really wants to use the vlogging as like their own tool to get different groups of people in who might not think that they want to go. You know what I mean? They they're partnering up with vloggers who yes, I've are seen not yes. in their regular range of people. Because like right. the Tim Tracker, everyone who watches the Tim Tracker already is going to go to Disney. So it's not going to hurt them if they drop him from the media. Right. But I heard they're specifically aiming for people whose audiences might not already go to Disney. Right. And and I, I understand Different that. travel people, different... Right. Dem- just, the yeah. demographics and things like that. But mm-hmm. I think that... Um, I would would not think that Disney would be that concerned about losing the publicity because regardless of what Disney does, including raising prices, creating some ridiculous lightning lanes and genie plus things that you have to pay for. Yeah. You know, there, there are millions of views still, on these videos a day though. But people still go to the parks. Because and I think that the vlogging has something to do with it. Absolutely. I don't know. I think that people go to the parks. The other thing though that I think Disney is concerned with, which is opposed to your points of why they shouldn't remove it, mm-hmm. is they can't control the narrative. Right? So if you get a a, a vlogger that says that's not on the media list that says this food is horrible i yes. hate this yeah you know this hotel sucked disney can't control that but what from what yes but what from what i've seen there are a lot of vloggers who specifically go out of their way to compliment disney at every chance they because get because they want to get on the so media list so that they can get on the media list right and once you're on the media list there's no chance you're going to say anything negative right but then at at what point are we saying this is disingenuous and you really cannot trust what some of these vloggers are saying i personally would like to see vloggers be honest i would like to see somebody go to the park and say i tried this food and i don't particularly like this I went to food and wine, like I told you, and mm-hmm. I or or maybe it was a festival of the arts that I went to as a separate time, and I had this bone marrow dish, All right. and it was the most disgusting thing I've ever had in my life. I, I was so disgusted, it, I I can't even express how still it has affected. <laughs> well, there goes me. our chances of getting on the media list. Right. So. I would like somebody to tell me the truth. Hey, listen, yeah. I didn't like this because I'm not talking about just trashing something because sure. you know what I mean? I'm talking about legitimate opinions because I think that's what makes some of these vlogs more interesting than others because you've got 27 vloggers all going to an a, a event, taking footage of the same thing. What, what makes you choose one over the other is right. their personality. Mm-hmm. So I, I would like to see more honesty, but that then flies in the face of Disney being able to control the narrative. So now they have to eliminate those people that aren't, aren't saying positive things because Disney doesn't want people saying negative things. So all that said, do you think that the United States is going to implement the same policy that exists in Tokyo and are they able to enforce it? I feel that they're not going to bring it over because, A, they are unable to enforce it, and, B, I don't think they'd want to lose all those people. I think there's enough views daily on these videos, millions of views every day, millions of people that have Disney World integrated into their everyday life just by seeing these people that makes them, like, even no matter what Disney does, they would most likely say to themselves – I want to still go because of all these people. I think that there is a very, very hard... I think it's hard to differentiate between people that are vlogging and people that are just recording their day at the park. I think that Disney... You know, you mentioned before, we were discussing this before the episode, and you said, well, what if someone films, gets away with it, and then Disney sees and takes them, you know, bans them there? I don't think that would ever happen. I think that's impossible to do. I think that the only case that that's ever happened is Adam the Woo who early in his career snuck into Disney uh, and showed specifically places that were not open to the public. I don't think that they would ban you for for filming. Well, I think that... So here's my opinion. I think that they could ban vloggers depending upon whether or not they think that the negative 
and I'm going to use an example for a minute, the Disney Star Wars Star Cruiser, mm-hmm. where they invited certain people, uh, FGTV, which is a kid's channel, yeah. and these people laughed at this thing. Now, yeah. it's extremely expensive. It's a two-night thing, and me being a lifelong it's like Star $6, Wars fan, right, I would never go to this thing. Mm-hmm. A, it's too much money, and B, I have no desire at my age to run around pretending I'm in the first order, right? And, and I'd be then, in the empire, yes. but they screwed that up with the first <laughs> order. If I could be Darth Vader, completely different story, but no, there is no empire. It's first order. What the hell is the first order? Who are these people? There's some blue lady that captains a ship. They want me to buy some kind of $5,000 drink. What the hell yeah. is in that? Gold? <laughs> Am I going to poop gold? I, I don't understand that. So Yeah, absolutely. It, but anyway, total... anyway, again, completely off the Disney media list. Mm-hmm. My point here is that they have these vloggers who they invited on to this five. $6,000 Star Wars hotel experience, mm-hmm. and they've said horrible things about it. Most of the people that I saw, they, it, and like, like, look, I'm going to flat out tell you, this place is bad. It's not fun. It's, you know, there's elements where it's like, oh, that's interesting, but it's not Star Wars. It's not an experience you'd ever do twice. It's not worth $6,000. But every video I have saw of the place that were all invited, and even the ones that weren't invited, said, you know, you might think that this would be an issue, but I never found it to be an issue, and I enjoyed my stay. It's like, of course you did. You didn't pay anything. Right. The right. only people that I've ever seen that were even remotely negative about the Star Cruiser that went were that FGTV. And I only saw that because you pointed out to me, you said, oh, you know, you told me that your son showed it to you. And you showed it to me because you were interested in how I think. And these people totally trashed it. They laughed at everything. Yeah. They did not take it seriously for the core demographic. Because, like, look, you know, 40-year-old men, like, a lot of the vloggers, are, are they are not the demographic of this. Older people that go there that have, you that you know, you're already, they're already famous and you already watch them. Those are not the people that they want to come and have fun on the Star Cruiser. It's children. And the children that well, went thought it was stupid. But but it's not only children because sure, but young children is, can't though, be there. Yes, but the There's ages nothing for them of to do. those those FGTV kids that were there. Well, they're in their teens. I think uh, some of them. I think I, th- I thought it was like teens and like l- early like like eleven, ten. Yeah, but still, those aren't. Yeah. I mean, they're not. They're not toddlers. But you can't I'd say really that's bring a the toddler. core demographic, wouldn't you? Uh, yeah. And they thought it was stupid. Well, my point here is that Disney might look at that and say, you know, we lost so much money on the Star Cruiser because arguably that was a loss. I think arguably I think all of the Disneyland exp- the uh, the Star Wars land expansion is a loss compared to what they thought it would be. I definitely think that people exaggerate that like people were like Disney is in shambles. Disney's just fine. Yeah, of course. And it I is. think that, you know, the the Star the Star Wars land, it wasn't the biggest flop as people are saying. It wasn't bone dry, empty, not a single person was there. Ray from Star Wars was crying in the corner because no one was there to meet her. Like people put the C three PO pulled his own legs off. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, hold on. There's not even C-3PO in Star Wars land. Okay, so that's another issue I, I think have. There, might be, there no. isn't. They stick R2-D2, and they stick some of these other droids that I have no idea again. And, and you know what? This whole thing with, and I know this is just, this is a very long podcast, and we are just going off topic. They are sticking characters into this land now to try to generate interest. Because yeah. this land, this planet of Batu spans a very limited amount of time yeah, between just, two let movies. Let me just give some context here, and I know it's long, but for those of you who don't know, Disney doesn't do unique stories anymore like the Haunted Mansion or Pirates of the Caribbean. They like just pulling from their vast amount of IPs to give us theme park attractions, but they don't even like doing that. They wouldn't give us like a ride through the Empire Strikes Back or, oh, here's a here's a ride about this new movie. They like to try and make their theme parks get integrated into the stories of these, you know, these these stories. And like it's a cool concept, but 
like what I'm saying is the Star Wars land. When you think of Star Wars land, you can think of maybe they'll give us an Endor and the Death Star and Hoth. Tatooine. They gave us they gave us a planet that looks like Tatooine, but it's called Batu. And it takes place in the world of Star Wars in between like episodes eight and nine. Right. They're new Disney movies and 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 it's and it's and then that in, in doing so they disclude the course, Han Solo or Luke Skywalker. Right. The course of those three end movies, those Disney movies, is a year. Yeah. And so like you that can't time have, frame. Right. right. So they stick that two into this very little yes. time frame. But now they're bringing the Mandalorian. Yeah, and the Mandalorian outside. doesn't fit. Exactly. exactly. And they're bringing characters there because what they tried to do is like, look, this is a real part of the Star Wars history. They wrote a book about it. I think it's stupid. I would have wanted, here's stuff from the Star Wars movies. Here's Darth Vader. Here's the Emperor. Here's the new guys. Here's the old guys because that's fun. Yeah. You don't need to feel like – because I never felt – no children – actually say i'm in the star wars story they say i'm in star wars land i can see the streets of new york from past that tunnel yeah. you know what i mean it's it's stupid so i think they should have just given us regular star wars but uh it's it's not as much as a flop as people are saying but i definitely think now they're trying to drum up more hype yeah. for this land through you know old characters and going against yeah. the story they were so desperate to set but i do think that they might be able or willing to reduce vloggers Maybe not eliminate all, but maybe make it that you need to be on a media list. And how would they enforce it? Well, I don't think it's a simple task. I think it would require a task force to patrol, you know, uh, YouTube videos. Now, this isn't unheard of. Even the federal government has done it when you use drones in, in a national park. Mm -hmm. So if they see you using drones on a video, you can get fined. So long story short here, we have gone off the rails, but I think this was an interesting, very interesting podcast. Hope you thought so too. Bottom line here is that Tokyo has enacted a new law or policy, I should say, Tokyo Disney, that prevents blogging, vlogging and live streaming. And you know whether or not we see it here in the U.S. is yet to be determined. I think there's, there's pros and cons for these theme parks. You know, whether they allow it or whether they limit it to a certain group of um, approved media vloggers, we'll, we'll see where that goes. And then we'll see what impact that has on these vloggers who make a ton of money, make their living from somebody else's creation. So it's going to mm -hmm. be interesting. I think maybe what we'll do is we'll follow this show up with another show in the future, not right after this one. But I'd like to hear your thoughts, Brendan, about people making money from somebody else's invention. We'll see if there's any legalities or, or issues with that, and um, we can have, have that discussion on another show. But that's going to do it for this episode. And we might be off the Disney We are definitely off list, the Disney list. But let me just tell you before we go, Universal Studios is awesome. <laughs> we love Harry Potter. Oh, no. We, I love – you know what I, I love? love? Harry Potter. You know what I love? I love Transformers. I love Spider Man. I love Doctor <laughs> Seuss. I love all the stuff in our Universal. And we'll and if you let us go there, we'll say wonderful things. We'll about say whatever you, you want, Universal. All, all right, right. put us on the it. media list. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to Understanding the Law Radio. If you haven't done so already, make sure that you subscribe to the podcast. We're available anywhere that you listen to your podcasts, including Amazon, Apple Music, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and many more. Also, don't forget to check us out online on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks again. See you next time.